Let's all share the good news with the Holy Family Daily Gospel Reflection Podcast with your host, Yvette Celeste. And I'm Haley. Hello and welcome. Welcome to the Holy Family Daily Gospel Reflection. My name is Yvette Celeste. And I'm Haley. And this is Haley. And she and I are going to share the gospel with you and your family. And let's get started with prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, glory to you, O God in the highest. Glory to you, O Lord. We give you thanksgiving and praise, for you are Lord. Lord, we lift our hearts to you, and we place every area of our heart into yours. Impress your heart into ours, O Lord. Make our hearts like yours, O Lord. And as we lift our hearts into yours, we place all of our personal and private intentions into your sacred heart. We give thanks to you in your hearing. As we lift our hearts to you in this way, we place every family member, we place every area of our lives into your sacred heart, and we place every moment that you've ordained for us all as family into your sacred heart. We ask to guide us, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Guide our families, guide our lives, guide our church, guide the Pope, guide our every government, guide every city, every town, and every nation, guide every country, O Lord, guide us all to glorify your holy name, to use your gifts, to use the fruits that you have given to us all, your charisms, and to fill us, O Lord, with your fruits and and virtues. We ask all of this in your holy name. And we ask to please lift us in our hearts and in our minds in the sanctifying grace of your Son, Jesus Christ, in the Holy Spirit, in your mercy that endures forever that we praise, and in your goodness, which is everlasting, that we rejoice in. We give thanks to you in your hearing. O Hosanna in the highest. And Haley, what would you like to place in the sacred heart of the Lord today? Me, my mom, my dad, everyone in the world, Turkey and Syria, astronauts, children, and animals. Very good. We are going to read all about how Jesus places his arms around a child today. And so we place all children, especially those that have been displaced from parents, those that are in Ukraine and also Turkey and Syria who may not be with their parents this evening or parents who have lost their children. We just place all families, especially those greatly affected by this earthquake in Turkey and Syria and this war in Ukraine and Russia. We place every area of family into the sacred heart of the Lord. Wonderful prayer, hey? As we lift all intentions into the sacred heart of the Lord, we give thanks to you, O Lord, in your hearing. We give thanks to you, O Lord, in your healing. And we give thanks to you, O Lord, in every area of our lives. Lift us, O Lord. Shift us, O Lord. Heal us, O Lord. Guide our hearts and ignite every heart ablaze in a renewed Pentecost. Pour your living water through every area of the world. Breathe on us, O Lord, in a renewed baptism. And call us, beckon us all to you. Never let us be separated from you, O Lord Jesus Christ. This we ask in your holy name. And we place every listener into the sacred heart of the Lord and all of your personal and private intentions. We pray over those intentions as well. As we place all of our personal and private intentions, we just pray over each other and everyone in the world. We give thanks to you, O Lord, in your hearing. We pray for repose of the soul for every person that has passed in this earthquake, known and not known to us yet, we we just lift every area because you know who they are and they are with you. We just praise you, O Lord. We ask for your Holy Spirit, your mercy wherever it's needed the most, and we ask for repose of every soul. And those that are in purgatory. We we pray for repose of every soul in purgatory. Eternal Father, we offer thee the most precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And you know what the Mass has said throughout the world today, for the holy souls in purgatory, for sinners everywhere, for sinners in the universal church, those within in my own family, in my own home, and 
everywhere in your kingdom. We just lift up everyone, O Lord, and we give thanks to you in your hearing. O Hosanna in the highest. Today is the feast day of the holy face of Jesus. Now, the holy face of Jesus is a devotion. It's the fourth highest devotion that you can possibly have. And the highest, of course, would be the Mass itself. Our Catholic Mass is the highest devotion we can have. That has been given to us by God. That has been given to us by our Lord Jesus Christ. And the second highest devotion that we can have is the Liturgy of the Hours. If you pray the hours, these are fixed times that we pray to God. And you can find the Liturgy of the Hours on divineoffice.org. I think that they have one. iBravery is another website, iBravery.com. And there's Divinum Officium, which is a uh, Latin English version of the Liturgy of the Hours. Sing the Hours is another wonderful resource. If you'd like to jump in on the Liturgy of the Hours, Lent is coming up. Lent is tomorrow. Lasts for 40 days, and this is a wonderful way to increase spending time in the Lord. What the Liturgy of the Hours is, is a fixed times throughout the day. You pray at 6 a.m., 9 a.m., 12 p.m., 3 p.m., 6 p.m., and again at 9 p.m. Their priests are required to pray the Liturgy of the Hours. Lay people have been increasingly more popular. God has asked me to pray the Liturgy of the Hours. In morning prayer, it came to me to pray the Liturgy of the Hours. So I have, in- through the grace of God who calls us all to pray the Liturgy of the Hours, I have been praying myself the Liturgy of the Hours, and Haley helps me every so often. And I just set an alarm for those times during the day to be able to set that time aside. Each of the prayers take about 10 minutes, so it's 10 minutes every day. But what it does, it's 10 minutes really every three hours. And each of the fixed times throughout the day is three hours apart. So 6 a.m., 9 a.m., 12 p.m., 3 p.m., 6 p.m., 9 p.m. And of course, some there are priests that pray throughout the night as well. They pray again at at 12 midnight and then 3 a.m. There are night prayers as well. So I don't pray those though. I just pray the 6, 9, 12, 3, 6, 9. And they're just wonderful ways to spend time in the Lord's presence and just spend time in His holy love. What they do is they sanctify your day with the Word of God and with prayer. There's always prayers of the Psalms. There's some from the New Testament, some tiny bit from the Gospel. There's always intercessions. There's prayers from the Gospels as well. We pray the Magnificat at 6 p.m. and we pray the Canticle of Zechariah at 6 a.m. in the morning prayer. And it's a wonderful way to sanctify your day with the Word and with prayer. And what's really wonderful is that everyone around the world, there's millions praying the Liturgy of the Hours with you as you pray at these fixed times throughout the day. So no matter what your time zone, each one of us has 6 a.m. in a different time zone pretty much for the most part. And As each time zone hits 6 a.m., there's another wave of prayer going around the world, and I just love being a part of that. So I just set an alarm, and I just take that 10 minutes wherever I'm at. Of course, there's also the 3 o'clock prayer that Jesus asked us to pray. It'd be a wonderful time to include the 3 o'clock prayer. This is the time that Jesus passed, and um, it is separate from the Liturgy of the Hours. The 3 o'clock prayer was given to us through St. Faustina from the Lord Himself. We could pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet at 3 p.m. Haley and I take time to do that. So um, these are wonderful. Lenten prayers if you don't already have a habit of doing them. Now, back to the fourth highest devotions. The third highest devotion that you can have is the rosary. And the rosary is wonderful to pray with your family every single night. There's five decades of the rosary, and each decade is an Our Father and Ten Hail Marys, a Glory Be, and a Fatima prayer. In the rosary, we meditate on the mysteries of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the mysteries are the certain times in Jesus' life. So there's the joyful mysteries as the time of his birth. The luminous mysteries are during the time of his miracles and ministry. The 
sorrowful mysteries are during the time of his bitter passion, and the glorious mysteries are during the time of his resurrection and ascension at Easter. Of course, the uh, descension of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost and the glorious assumption of Mother Mary as well as her coronation. Now, as we spend time focusing on the meditations of the mysteries, we are spending time in the presence of the Lord while our Heavenly Mother prays for us, and she is the highest intercessor we have. And this is a wonderful devotion to have with your family. The Rosary is a spiritual sword for you and your family and your intentions. I personally have seen Mother Mary in a vision she has allowed me to see. As we were all praying the Rosary at Prince of Peace Catholic Church, I felt the Heavenly Mother's love pour through me. Now, I knew it was the Heavenly Mother's love. I could feel her love because this was revealed in the Holy Spirit. And as I felt her love pour through me in the same moment, I also saw in a vision her prayers were over Prince of Peace Catholic Church. And this was so beautiful, illuminated in a light I can't describe because it's beyond description, but just so beautiful and so loving, almost like a shield over us. And this in the Holy Spirit was revealed to me as her mantle. Her prayers are her mantle over us. And if you've ever heard anyone say, Mother Mary, place your mantle over me, her prayers are her mantle. And this was an incredible light, a illuminated, radiant, brilliant can only come from heaven, filled with heavenly peace from the Blessed Mother, filled with the brilliant light that can only come from the Blessed Mother. And it was like a shield over us all. It was so beautiful to be under her mantle. Now, as I was watching her mantle over us, her prayers over us, I also watched the enemy come to attack Prince of Peace Catholic Church, but couldn't, and was absolutely cast off, just pew, and had no power over her rosary whatsoever. The enemy has no power over Mother Mary's rosary, and that is why they call her rosary a spiritual sword. It truly is a spiritual sword. One of the deacons at my church says a decade a day keeps the devil away, and he is absolutely right. So, Rosary is an incredible way to spend time in Lent. If you don't already pray the rosary, you don't have one, get one and <laughs> pray it with your family. Just start including even a decade with your family or the whole rosary it takes about 15 to 20 minutes. A scriptural rosary, you read the scripture out loud of the mystery before you pray the rosary. And there's many resources you can search for, for how to pray the rosary if you don't know how. Bishop Barron, for instance, has a wonderful YouTube video on the rosary and includes the prayers. As he's going along, he highlights the different beads on the rosary. It's a wonderful uh, visual for you. Not to plug another podcast, but Haley and I have a Holy Family Rosary podcast if you'd like to pray along with Haley and I. And there are so many resources out there. So just find one. It doesn't matter which one. Just find one if you don't know how to pray the rosary. If you don't have the beads yet, you can just use your fingers or you can just pray along until you get a rosary. And it is a beautiful way to pray with the Heavenly Mother to her Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And she is the highest intercessor we have. And she loves when we offer her rosary for penance. A penance is an act of love for someone on behalf of ourselves or someone else. We can offer her rosary as penance. She's also asked us to offer her rosary for conversion of Russia and even conversion of our family members. We can offer her rosary for those who do not love, praise, and adore the Lord. That is what Mother Mary prays for the most because those who crucified her son were the ones who did not listen to him. And so we want to ask for her intercession over 
for all in the world who may not love, may not praise, and may not adore her son, our Lord Jesus Christ. So that's the third highest devotion and is completely recommended. Of course, it is completely recommended to come to Mass as well. This is an invitation. Come to Mass and adore the Lord. He is present at the altar. And this is also an invitation for Liturgy of the Hours. And today being the feast day of the Holy Face of Jesus, this is the fourth highest devotion you can have. The devotion to the Holy Face of Jesus, there are so many different ways you can devote your prayer to the reparation for sins to the holy face of Jesus. One is the litany to the holy face of Jesus. There's a litany. You can just search for that. And you can also search for prayers of reparation to the holy face of Jesus. There's a novena to the holy face of Jesus. And you can just include this in your daily prayer, in your uh, weekly prayer, daily is recommended. So, Happy Feast Day to the Holy Face of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is a way to make reparation for sin. And in the Litany to the Holy Face, there is an indulgence for the Holy Souls, I believe, for a 100 days. So, use those indulgences. Use those. And let's all just give thanks to God for His love for us, that we can offer an act of love on behalf of someone else and or ourselves. We can use the prayers of Fatima. There's the angel of peace that preceded Mother Mary, who appeared to the three shepherd children, who gave us the act of pardon and the act of reparation. Those are two prayers that we can use as well. St. Gertrude, I just prayed just a moment ago, gave us the prayer of St. Gertrude for the holy souls of purgatory, for repose of the soul for the holy souls in purgatory. And you can find that just by Googling a uh, prayer of St. Gertrude for all the holy souls in purgatory. You'll find lots of different websites have those available for you. So those are just suggestions. The priest at Prince of Priest Catholic Church, his name is Father Mike Shea in Albuquerque, New Mexico. He has suggested for Lent to choose a gospel and just read a chapter a day of that particular gospel. He said, if you choose Mark, it's one of the shortest gospels, you'll have read it twice before Lent is over. So that is another wonderful Lenten practice that you can do is just choose a gospel and read a chapter a day with your family. And God loves when we share His living word with family. So why don't we go ahead and get started? Happy Feast Day of the Holy Face of Jesus. And Haley is going to read to us from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verses 30 through 37. Jesus and his disciples left from there and began a journey through Galilee, but he did not wish anyone to know about it. He was teaching his disciples and telling them, The Son of Man is to be handed over to men, and they will kill him. And in three days after his death, the Son of Man will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and they were afraid to question him. They came to Capernaum, and once inside the house, he began to ask them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they remained silent, for they had been discussing among themselves on the way who was the greatest. Then he sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, If anyone wishes to be first, he shall not, he shall be the last of all and be the servant of all. Taking a child, he placed it in their midst, and putting his arms around it, he said to them, Whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Haley, for reading that for us. You're welcome. Okay, so as we get started with today's gospel reflection, we turn the word into prayer and praise. Now, this is a little like Lexio Divina. In Lexio Divina, we read the word two or three times, we contemplate, we meditate on the word, and we turn the word into prayer. And so let's go ahead and turn the word into prayer. Glory to you, O God in the highest. Glory to you, O Lord. We sing praise to you, for you have come for us all. Dear Lord, we ask for the strength in the Holy Spirit to serve and to love one another as you have asked us to love and to serve 
with great love in acts of charity for those around us. We ask for you to guide us in acts of charity and in acts of love for one another, as you've asked us to do. Strengthen us all, O Lord, to act according to your will. And we ask for you, O Lord, in every moment of our lives, guide our words, guide our actions, guide every area of every life around us and that of everyone in the world. May you strengthen us all to act according to your will. And we ask for this through your holy name. Amen. And we invite the prayers of Mother Mary, St. Joseph, the Holy Family, the Holy Saints, St. Gertrude, please pray for us. St. Faustina, please pray for us. All holy men and women, please pray for us. We ask for the prayers of the martyrs to please pray for us and all to turn to Jesus in every nation. And we thank you for your prayers. We ask for the prayers of the holy angels and archangels led by St. Michael to be with us in an angel embrace and to pray over us. Pray with us, pray over us, pray with our families, pray over over our families and fill our homes, O Lord, dear Jesus Christ, with your angels and archangels. Fill our hearts with yourself and the Holy Spirit. Make our hearts your perpetual habitation. And we ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And praise be to Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Today's gospel is so beautiful. This is the second prediction of the Passion. Now, we have just witnessed Jesus coming down from the mountain and casting out this demon from this child. He has just come down from the mountain from the transfiguration with Peter, James, and John. And he led Peter, James, and John up the mountain in the transfiguration. They they came back down the mountain, and here is this boy that the disciples were trying to cast a demon from. And they were unable to. Jesus says that this kind can only come out through prayer in the gros- in the Gospel of Mark. Elsewhere in the Gospels, it also says through prayer and fasting. Fasting is something that is so very recommended. In fact, that it's required of us on Ash Wednesday and on Good Friday. And of course, we fast from meat typically on Fridays. And of course, you can always choose to fast a different day during Lent. In addition to Ash Wednesday and Good Friday, you can pray over which day that might be. Typically, that might be on Fridays. It can also be on Wednesdays. Some people fast on Wednesdays because it's the day that Judas Iscariot betrayed Jesus. There is also a spiritual director who told me that People fast also on Tuesdays. Those are the days of the sorrowful mysteries of the rosary is Tuesday and Friday. So some people will choose Tuesday or you could choose one or two of them. But ask the Holy Spirit what would be good for you if this is something that you feel called to do. You can choose to ask the Holy Spirit which day would be good for you to fast any age between 18 and 65. They say it's better not to fast over 65. If you're 65, the Catholic Church does not require you to to fast. And abstaining from meat is age 14 and above. So this Ash Wednesday, we're we're asked to fast. So we're going to touch on that just a little bit. Uh, fasting would be two small meals and a large meal, no meat, and very plain. One time I was guided by the Holy Spirit to fast and reminded by the angels. And I had never fasted before. I, I didn't know what to do really. And the angels whispered in the Holy Spirit, two small meals and a large meal. And I said, oh, okay. I remembered that that sounded familiar, of course, from Ash Wednesday. And I said, can I have coffee? And the angel said, that'll end your fast. And I went, oh, man, because I at the time, I really liked coffee. I enjoyed coffee. I've always drinking coffee since I was probably very young, like 16. And so giving up coffee was not the easiest thing in the world to do on my own. I had to ask the Lord for help. And that's something that we see throughout the gospel, even when Peter... Uh, sees Jesus walking on the water and he says, Jesus, if it's you, bid me to come to you. 
And Jesus says, come. So he does. He gets out of the boat and he comes and he starts to walk on the water and still until he starts to look at his surroundings. And then he starts to think and he goes, Jesus, save me. Well, so we need to ask Jesus for help to do hard things. And one of those things can be giving up alcohol. It can be giving up coffee. It can even be giving up smoking. It can be giving up something that is very dear to us that may not be the best thing for us. So I had to lean on God. I knew the Lord was asking me to give up coffee. And as I was, um, I had later that evening, I I had been watching a, a movie or a documentary on Divine Mercy. And as I was watching the documentary, I started to think about giving up coffee. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit illuminated my heart. I knew there was a second sign that the God really wanted me to give up coffee. And so I was like, okay. Um, I, you know, time continued. Fast forwarding now, I went into what I called my angel office and I was typing at my computer. And this time I literally felt my guardian angel come up to my left elbow and take my left elbow ever so gently in, in his hands. And he said, it'd be better if you gave up coffee. And then he was gone. And the heavenly peace that accompanied my guardian angel touching my elbow and speaking to me was incredible. I knew the Lord was asking me to give up coffee. So, the next morning, I gr- I agreed, but it's easier to agree at 8 p.m. than it is at 8 a.m., only because that's when you need the coffee or your body does. But the point is, your body's not in charge. God is. And you want to place God first. The body doesn't have control. God has control. And the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. That's also written. So, I looked up and I said, I let go and I let God. I let go and I let God. Every single time that I had a craving for coffee, realizing that's my body that's craving the coffee, not my spirit, not my will, but my body. If I give in to my body, then I would have ended my fast. So I looked up to God, I let go and I let God. And every time that I said that, the feeling went away, that pang, if you will, of wanting that caffeine. Now, I had to do that, I have to say, three days before it was finally taken from me. And what I did, I substituted water. Now, at first, if I would have told myself I'm going to substitute water for coffee, not only would I have laughed myself silly, but I wouldn't have done it. But I did with the Lord's help. And now, I just really like hot water. So, and because I always like to have something warm. Um, I usually have like, I thought, I also thought I'll substitute coffee with tea, but tea has caffeine and God, I knew wanted me to give up caffeine. And so I now have herbal tea and um, when I'm fasting, I just, I just heat up water just because I like something warm. I like that feeling of something warm inside of my chest when it's first thing in the morning, but it doesn't have to have caffeine now. The Lord took that from me, but I had to do it with his help. It wasn't something that I would have or could have done on my own. Why? Because my body has cravings for something that isn't of God and the Holy Spirit. And in order for my body to have the strength to overcome caffeine, I needed God's help. And so that's also occurred on previous Lenten fastings when I gave up alcohol for the fast for the, for the full 40 days. I wasn't an alcoholic, but I was in a habit of drinking wine every weekend with my, with my dinner. And it took the, it definitely took the Lord's help with giving up wine for that. Once upon a time, not to keep you, but I had, (laughs) I had also, thought on a different Lenten fast that the, what I'll give up is alcohol, but I'll give it up on Fridays when we abstain from meat, but not Saturdays and not Sundays. I'll just give it up on Friday. Well, the Lord appeared to me and he said, you'll wish you would have given it up for the whole 40 days. And I thought, Whoa, 
Gee, okay. All right, 40 days, here it goes. I'm going to do it for the whole 40 days. So Friday, I was all already headstrong on giving it up on Friday. But Saturday, Saturday, I didn't have that headstrongness. And Saturday came around and suddenly I wanted a glass of wine. And it took me asking God for help. I let go and I let God. I let go and I let God. And God's love filled me every single time I said I let go and I let God. And God helped me to overcome wanting a glass of wine. And it turns out God ended up taking wanting a glass of wine from me later that year as well. I gave it up for the whole Lent, and I lasted probably about the end of summer. The next year, I gave up from Lent again, but this time I knew God would help me, so I gave it up, and I lasted all the way until about Thanksgiving. And the next year, I gave it up for Lent, and this time, God took it all together, and I didn't pick it up anymore after that. And I never will again, only because I love sobriety. And sobriety is incredible. Being free of caffeine and alcohol and cigarettes is absolutely amazing. Being free of any kind of substance that is addictive whatsoever is incredible. So if you have one of those, you might want to consider asking God to help you to overcome it. It's not something you can do on your own, or maybe it is. But when you invite God in, it's a whole different story. So in this gospel reflection, the disciples are discussing amongst themselves who's the greatest. Now, since Peter, James, and John had just come down from the mountain, I wonder, now it doesn't say this, but I wonder if one of them hadn't maybe had a little bit more pride than the others that saying I'm more important, or maybe this one's more important. The other nine apostles didn't come up the mountain with, with Jesus, but here they are discussing who's the greatest in front of Jesus. Who is the greatest? Now, this borders on pride, and Jesus takes the child in his arms and says, Whoever receives this child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Now, the footnotes of the Bible say that this commentary is due to the disciples' lack of understanding. Their role in Jesus' work is one of service, especially to the poor and lowly. Children were the symbol of, Jesus used for the anawim, the poor in spirit, the lowly in the Christian community. And as we ourselves lift ourselves as children to God, saying, God, if you will it, you can help me. If you will it, you can take this from me. If you will it, I can say yes to you. Here I am, Lord. Strengthen me. Jesus calls us all to be saints, all of us, but we need God's help for that. So let's ask the Lord to strengthen us as his children, leaning on God with all of our understanding to be obedient to his holy word and to serve and to love one another as he has asked us to love. This Lent, as we give thanks to God, for his love for us, because he did not withhold one drop of blood on the cross, not one. St. Faustina says that one drop alone would have been enough for the salvation of the world. But he didn't hold back one drop. Every drop was spilled. Every drop of his blood he gave for us all. That is the ultimate sacrifice. So as we lift up our Lenten sacrifices, as we lift up our Lenten penances, let's remember Jesus gave himself for us all. If there's something that's hard for us, let's lift it up and let's give it to Jesus who gave us himself and is with us every step of the way. He loves us. He, We adore him. We give ourselves to him. And by the way, if we haven't been to Mass in a while, this is a wonderful time. Come to Mass. Come see Jesus with us. Come see Jesus with me. 
is the word of the angels that they gave to Haley in inviting her own parents to Mass, and as a result, her parents do come to Mass. Jesus, who loves us, gives us himself, and we give him ourselves in the holiest matrimony there is. That is the Eucharistic celebration. He loves us. He is with us, and we adore him, and we always will. So let's come to Mass. And if we haven't received the body and blood of our Lord, the actual, not not a symbol, but the transubstantiated body and blood of our Lord, the actual body and blood, transubstantiated by the power of the Holy Spirit, the Lord himself. If we haven't received that, let's register and make haste to do so. Let's sign up for RCIA. These are the classes that are available in your local Catholic parish. They are available for everyone. Just sign up for the next RCIA class and inquire. Make haste to do so. Register your family. And in the meantime, come to Mass and adore the Lord who gave everything, sacrificed everything for us. And may God bless you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May he look kindly upon us and grant us all his peace. Lord, grant us all your rest. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Haley, do you have any words of wisdom that you'd like to share with everybody out there? God loves you. God does love you. God loves you. God loves me, for God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son, that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. And may God bless you. Bye, families. May God bless you. Bye. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, 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 b